Hello and welcome to the USS Iowa Battleship. So we just came off of a cruise ship right now and the battleship is is right behind the cruise ship. So after getting off the cruise ship, we are getting on the battleship. To see what's inside, it's a very historic battleship as you're gonna find out in the next few minutes. So come with me, let's get inside the battleship. These are 16 inch guns which fire projectiles that are 16 inches in diameter and can hit targets up to 24 miles away, which is roughly 37 or 38 kilometers away. These guns can fire armor-piercing rounds weighing 2,700 pounds each. Now just try to imagine that. And here we have these heavy, heavy chains that are carrying the anchor at the bow of the ship. Here's an M2 Browning 50 caliber machine gun used for defense. These machine guns are used uh, to, to stop close-range hostile elements such as small boats that are trying to approach the ship with, uh, you know, with hostile intent. Or also it's used for anti-aircraft purposes. Now let's have a look inside and see the state rooms of the officers. As you can see, it's not even close to the, I mean, these are officers, you know, they, these are one of the best cabins or staterooms that you can have on this ship. And it's not even close to the, to the worst cruise cabin on a cruise ship, you know, so just to compare, you know, the, the difference. And here's uh, the staff room for the officers where they hold meetings and they, they have their, sometimes they have their functions. And here's uh, the dishwashing area beside that staff. Um, I, should I even call them conference room or? Uh, and here's another meal prep area on the ship here. And this is the executive officer's cabin, which is probably the second best stateroom on the ship, second only to the captain. And, uh, you know, even officers, senior officers have to use a common bathroom. They don't have ensuite bathrooms like we have on the cruise ships. Just remember that. Here's a gunpowder hatch where they throw gunpowder all the way to the bottom of the ship. Now we are back outside on the deck. And let's uh, climb up these stairs to have a look at those 5-inch guns. Now, 5-inch guns are smaller compared to the 16-inch guns, but they are no joke. They fire projectiles that are 5 inches wide and used for close range. So if, you, if you're battling a ship that's close by... Uh, oh, there's the bridge. Uh, and uh, yeah, like I said, if you're battling a ship that's close by, you, you use 5-inch guns. And on top of those towers are the gun directors that direct fire of these guns and other uh, armaments on the ship, like uh, like missiles. Uh, yeah, so here are the five inch guns for destroying targets that are too close for the main 16 inch guns. Let's have a look underneath these uh, five inch gun turrets to see how complex they are. As you can see, there's a lot going on here. I can't even pretend to know what these are, but th this is everything that's required to operate each five inch gun turret. It's pretty complex. Now it's not just a point and shoot. And what do we have here? We have a phalanx or sea whiz gun system. We're gonna look into that closely later on, but for now. Here's the flag bridge just below the main bridge. This is where the admiral sits if the admiral's on the ship. But now we are on the main bridge level, which is deck four. See, the Admiral Bridge, or Flag Bridge, is below this. Uh, yeah, we are inside the main bridge. And what you can see here, let me show you. Uh, there is this thing called the Conning Tower. Because it's, it's an armored portion of the bridge. Where, uh, you know, where you can still maintain control of the ship after the bridge has been hit. See, we are inside. You see, there's really very small holes that you can look out of. And all you can use really are instruments, but uh, yeah, it's a part of a ship where you could stay protected during battle. If you are inside the, the armored conning tower, which has 17 inches of, of, of uh, steel armor, uh, you're going to be protected and still be able to operate the ship even after getting hit directly onto the bridge. Let's step out of the bridge here. And uh, yeah, let's uh, climb up another set of stairs. 
onto deck five. There's a sea whiz right there, or phalanx. See, there's a portion of the armored conning tower that sticks out on top. Now we are on the uh, external or the open bridge on top of the bridge. Now, um, it's a, basically, it's part of the bridge that sticks out on top, out in the open for greater visibility. Uh, you don't really need that in modern ships, but this isn't, you know, the ship was built in World War II, so they still had the open bridges. But if you have more information about it, this is all I know. Let me know in the comments below this video. And uh, yeah, you can look up there. Those are the fire directors for your various weapon systems from guns to missiles on the ship. And uh, yeah, here are your instruments. From what I know, the compass does not work inside an iron, uh, I guess, an iron clad ship like this one. It doesn't work well inside, so it has to be outside. That's one of the reasons I understand why they had the open bridge uh, on these older ships, because the compass does not work well inside. Let's get on to the SeaWiz here, the SeaWiz weapon system or phalanx. These, uh, these guns, <laughs> they're anti-aircraft Gatling guns, really half powered, but they have been nicknamed R2-D2 for obvious reasons. If you're wondering what SeaWiz stands for, it's C-I-W-S. It stands for Close In Weapon System because it, it, uh, it defends the ship from close range threats like airplanes and this thing can hit missiles, you know, because listen to this, this gun can fire uh, 20 millimeter diameter rounds at, get this, 4,500 rounds a minute. That is 75 shots fired every second, and it's controlled by radar, so it can hit missiles and planes and wherever else you have uh, that are approaching the ship at close range. Speaking of missiles and incoming threats, close range, uh, what we have here are SRBOC launchers. Uh, it's short for Super Rapid Bloom Offboard Countermeasure Chaff. It's, uh, it's a system that fires bits of metal into the air or even fireworks to, uh, to fool incoming missiles from the enemy. So if, uh, if your other defenses fail to catch an incoming missile or cruise missile or anti-ship missile, uh, hopefully these are going to catch them. And, uh, you know, hopefully the, the missiles are going to hit the exploding pieces of metal instead of your ship. Speaking of anti-ship missiles, this ship also has its own anti-ship missiles to throw at the enemy. It doesn't just protect itself from incoming uh, anti-ship missiles. It can fire its own. And this is the AGM-84 Harpoon. A lot of you have probably heard of this before. It's a really well-known anti-ship missile, which is kind of obsolete already right now, but it's still, it's still okay by certain standards. It can also be fired from, uh, from aircraft, such as the F-18. But uh, in this case, it's fired from this ship uh, to hit other ships and destroy them. And that's, uh, that's pretty much it. So there you have it, the AGM-84 Harpoon Anti-Ship Missile. Now this is a weapon system that a lot of you know about. It's a Tomahawk cruise missile. And here's a launcher right in front of me. It can hit targets up to 1500 miles away or 2400 kilometers away. The Iowa class battleship has eight of these launchers, four on each side. So four missiles per launcher. You got 32 Tomahawk missiles on board the ship. If you're a non-officer, these will be your sleeping accommodations. These things are called racks. So uh, basically they're, they're bunks. And that's where you uh, sleep if you don't have a, uh, an officer rank aboard the ship, which is a majority of the crew. Earlier, you've seen the sleeping accommodations for uh, officers and junior officers. Well, if you're not one of those guys, these are your sleeping accommodations. You got a little bit of area here to hang out. Now, this is the cabin of the Master Chief Petty Officer, which is the highest ranking non-commissioned officer or enlisted personnel aboard the ship. 
Here's an armored communications tube for vital communications aboard the ship. So, you know, when the ship gets hit, your communications will not be severed because your important vital wiring for important communications are inside the armored tube and it goes all throughout the ship. Now, if you ever wonder what happens to all the garbage and trash aboard this ship, well, here's the garbage incinerator. You can see it's, uh, yep, all your garbage is incinerated right here. So you don't leave a trail of garbage when you have enemy ship closing in after you. And uh, close by, surprisingly, is the bakery. And it's, uh, yeah, there's a food preparation area here. And uh, yeah, the, you can see with the, uh, with the equipment here that this is the bakery. And they, hey, we got some bread in the oven, huh? Now, here's a sample menu from 1986 when the ship was still in service for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and midnight rations. That's what it means when it says mid-rats, or it means midnight rations. Because for those who may not know, this ship was in service from 1943 to 1992. Now, okay, we're here in the mess hall. One thing you should know about Navy ships is that they serve the most delicious meal for their crew because you know it, it helps with morale especially if you're in a war you don't want to be depressed with your food I mean that's you know that's one of the things that you look forward to when you are in the Navy so yeah no they, they serve high calorie high protein delicious meals on board warships you know from what I heard the most delicious meals that you can ever eat aboard a uh, a warship would be on submarines and battleships. Looks like you got a muffin tray right there. Uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, like as I said, a lot of delicious meals were served aboard warships. Got some fruits here. Oh, look at all that lemon there. And a lot of pop. I bet there was no shortage of pop aboard these ships. And uh, yeah, you got some. You got some coffee machine right here. Uh, yeah, this is a milk dispenser right here. Just a little bit of history about this ship. This USS Iowa battleship is a lead ship of a class of 45,000 ton battleships and there's other battleships under this class so this is the first one of course it was built in uh, it was built in Brooklyn in New York in 1942 I mean it completed in 1942 but other battleships under the class of Iowa are the New Jersey the Missouri the Wisconsin the Illinois and the Kentucky that this USS Iowa uh, battleship was commissioned in 1943 in February and uh, this ship spent initial service in, in the Atlantic during World War II. And it was also present in the biggest naval battle in history, the Battle of the Philippine Sea and Leyte Gulf. And I believe this ship last saw action during the Korean War before it got decommissioned in 1990. Now, this is an area that I'm not familiar with. I, I'm not really sure what's going on here. It appears to be a section of the ship that's you know, close to the hull. Uh, I, I, I don't really know what's going on here. If you know, please let us know in the comment section. Maybe you can give us some information about this section that I do not know about. Hey, yeah, this is the print shop. Uh, you know, when they need to print some newsletters or some important publications to distribute to the crew aboard the ship. Yeah, they have a, they have a full-time print shop here. And this is where they, look at this, for those uniforms, those gala uniforms, this is where they press them. And these are um, dry cleaning equipment. You look at this, it just says right here, laundry and dry cleaning and tailoring. So yeah, that's how the sailors are able to keep their uniforms in great shape. And speaking of laundry, here are your big industrial sized 
laundry machines. Look at that. Uh, here's a oh, this is a this is actually a dryer. Okay. So yeah, look how look how huge they are. And I bet the washers are towards in this area. Let's have a look at the wall. Oh, here are the washers. There they are. Take a look here. That I believe the blue ones are the washers. Uh, yeah. Uh, here's the description. It's called the Dyna Wash or you know blue box because it's blue. <laughs> yeah. Let's walk down this hallway. See what else we could find here. Oh, look at this, the barber shop. Well, you know, you're in the Navy, you're in the Armed Forces, you gotta keep that haircut well maintained every single time. Can't have long shaggy hair in the Navy. Look at that, we're back out in the sunshine. Ooh, just like that, we're, uh, well, we're actually towards the, uh, the rear. Yeah, we're at the rear of the ship. Okay, okay. I thought we were coming out towards the front, but we were actually at the back. Oh, and there's the cruise ship that we were just on. And this area right here is actually the helipad. You know, when the ship was in operation, you could land helicopters here. You can still see the H written on the floor or on the deck. Now, you know, the ship is no longer in operation. It's, it, they just put a, a big canopy right here for events, you know, if you if you have certain events and ceremonies that you want to do here, you have this big canopy that you can use. So this includes our tour of the battleship Iowa. I hope you enjoyed it, but it's you know, whatever you've seen on this video is probably only 5% of what you could learn if you actually came here. But for those of you who cannot come here, at least I've been able to impart some knowledge about the ship, about the history, and... Uh, seen the interior so i'm glad you enjoyed the uh i hope you enjoyed the tour that i did that i just did but for you or for those of you who can come over i would highly suggest you come over because there is a lot more you could learn on this ship by being here it's a lot more you could spend all day here and uh, maybe not even enough